So I'm here today in Birmingham at the Transform Now Clinic and I'm going to be meeting Dr Imran Khan. Uh, myself and Imran have been friends for about two or three years. We've worked on different projects together and he's going to be taking my bloods today, putting me through some different uh, physical tests to make sure that I'm in good health and to see if there's any underlying issues that we need to be aware of moving into my 40s. So let's go and check it out. Hey, how you doing, pal? Hey, Kirk, how you doing, man? Good, man. A long been time. Been a while. Yeah, how you keeping keeping well. I'm yeah. good, I'm good. Grab a, grab a seat. Cheers, pal. Looking good. Well, we're getting there. We're uh, slowly improving week by week. Transformation's on. It's on. It's been uh, it's been quite a while coming. You made so, a private gym, didn't you? Yeah. So um, at the factory in Unit Five, we put Smith machine, uh, some dumbbells, Olympic bar. Just, just just did compound movements for about two months till the gym's opened, and then uh, as soon as the gym's opened back up, started to up it a bit started to try and you know increase my strength and stuff yeah. so yeah it was good it was it survived me through the winter anyway yeah yeah, yeah. now you're looking leaner yeah i've i've uh, i've sold out i've started going through crossfit now <laughs> you know. make sure we're getting this he's gone wet yeah. crossfit <laughs> yeah i've sort of uh, now just you know what heavy lifting of all, all those years the yeah. joints can't take it anymore no so i was planning on you know doing a senior comp and mm. covid came along so just uh just really sort of you just, Ca cardio beast. <laughs> yeah, well, to be fair, I mean, I've started doing cardio myself and yeah. I do feel a lot better from it. Um, it's something I didn't do a lot of back when I was bodybuilding. Uh, and I think it's important. One of the main reasons I'm here today as well, to make sure that everything in my heart and... Um, yeah, I think the thing is, you know, like, because when you're younger, you don't care. You just want to get hench and big, mm. massive. And you start getting older, the joints aren't, aren't the same. Your, no. your recovery is definitely not the same. Your nutrition, you know, you've got to be more careful on nutrition. Mm. Also, cardiovascular strength. Yep. and the the exercise capacity mm. it has to be better you know your yeah. heart has to be working there's no point in being huge 140 150 kg when you can't walk up the stairs no and i think we all realize that at a certain stage that you know i've done my bit now yeah. and now we need to be doing more cardio can you still keep strong yeah i mean don't get me wrong you'll still do heavy sessions but yeah. not the way we used to before i i found it difficult i mean i stopped bodybuilding um 29 28 so i've had i'm, I'm 38 yeah. So I've had the best part of like nearly nine years out, Quite I'd say. Right, yeah. And I thought when I was going to come back into it um, six weeks ago, seven weeks ago, that I was going to kind of pick it up where I left off. But there's a huge difference in yeah. the way I feel like um, uh, physically, uh, the yeah. le le lethargy as well. That's definitely been something I wasn't expecting. I was You've expecting got to remember the, to, the, you know, the concept of sort of muscle memory. Mm. It'll, it will come back, but you've had 10 years essentially mm where your tendons haven't been used at the same yeah. intensity, the muscle fibres haven't been used, so you just get broken up at the same intensity, yeah. the biomechanics of squatting, etc. You've been you've had 10 years of not really squatting heavy or benching, so the whole movements, yeah. it's not the same. And also we've aged 10 years, yeah. you know, unfortunately we have aged 10 years. Yeah. And when you look at the, the peak of people in tennis, you know, football, uh, MMA, etc., yeah. there's a a certain age where it gets a lot harder so they'll say the guy's 36 but yeah. he's getting on a bit now he's had a long career he's been yeah. fighting five or six years yeah and that's considered a long career because your body just isn't there the reflexes yeah. aren't there the central nervous system doesn't work the same way no and unfortunately it's part of aging i mean it's like bodybuilding does attack the central nervous system a lot doesn't it, it puts a lot of pressure on it i suppose similar to mma yeah. um the same kind of training um what you do for that is intense and it's relentless isn't it i guess yeah. also you've got to remember the food mm the sheer amount of food you're eating for bodybuilding. Yeah. And, you know, it is considered to be a, like a, an eating disorder by people like Pulp and other, other sort of academics. You're yeah. eating a lot of food, a lot of rest, yeah. um, you know, 45, 50 minute hour workouts. You know, that sort of new school is like 45, 50 to an hour. The old school would be doing 12 workouts. Yeah. And then you're eating and you're resting to yeah. let your body recover and sleep. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very intensive on the yeah. body. and. You're always one injury away from yeah. retirement. Do you know, I've noticed that. So, so I had a pec major tear, uh, my tendon tore off the bone. Yeah. So I had that reattached. And uh, I had a slight tweak when I started off on my left uh, pec. It was, it was okay though. Yeah. Um, and it's always in the back of my head now. So I've got up to like um, 60 kilos of silent incline press on the, on the um, machine. 
and I'm thinking, oh, is it going to rip off? Yeah. Oh, is it? And it's always in the back of your mind, which I suppose when you're younger, you, we were saying this on the way down, you just feel invincible. Uh, there's I, a I huge think you are, mental because difference. you've got that, um, you know, the sort of whole world is there for you, isn't it? Yeah. And you're, you've got that naivety of youth, and yeah. you know, you're Superman, yeah. and it's nothing can stop you. No. And you're getting stronger every workout, yeah. every week, you're a bit bigger than you was the previous year, and everything, everything's good. Yeah. And then with the, the reality of injuries, and tears yeah. and lots of people unfortunately their careers have yeah. have finished because of that and it, but especially within bodybuilding with the aesthetic side Absolutely. of it if your pec is not not right yeah you know you're not well, going to it's, it's like me I, my um, the reattachment of my tendon uh throws off my symmetry slightly so it's not yeah. an actual pec major tear it's a tendon rupture it's a full rupture yeah. so when it's been put back in uh, to the um, humulus interosity, I think it's called humulus interosity. It's it, it shaped different. Yeah. So now well, the, pulley, it, the pulley is different, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And, and I've noticed that my right tricep is a lot is bigger than my left tricep, my long head, because it's yeah. obviously taking a lot more uh, off the off the pack. But I'm not competing again. We're doing this purely as a um, I could get back into good shape again, yeah. and to show people that no matter what stage they are in their life. If you want to do something, you can you can do it. It doesn't mean it needs to be stage ready. Look, but absolutely, you, know. you don't. I mean, to get into stage condition yeah. and to put that time and dedication in yeah. to ultimately maybe win nothing. A trophy. Yeah, or a plastic trophy, mm. or you know, a huge amount of stress. Mm. You know, it's it's good because it shows anybody can be in good shape at whatever yeah. stage of life they're in, and it doesn't matter where you've been. You can always improve. Yeah, you can reach rock bottom. You can only get better. Mm. And you know, we've seen with COVID. We've seen with the health systems now, globally, you have to be responsible for your own health. Mm. There's no ifs or buts anymore. It's pretty, fairly clear. Absolutely. You know, you need to keep your weight controlled, your health up. Mm. You need to keep your health monitored and just to have your own longevity and quality of life. I think since, since I've started back on the bodybuilding path, I've actually been way more, um, well, noticeably more um, engaged on what supplements I'm taking. Every single health measure Whereas in the past, I didn't really care. I'd eat bad foods. Yeah. It has really changed me mentally by doing this, which is definitely for the better for me. Yeah. But I think uh, as I'm getting older, uh, it's, it's also very uh, interesting for me to see what damage I've done in the past. Yeah. So in, in, a, in a funny way, you know, when I spoke to you on the phone earlier, I was saying I'm, I'm a bit worried about coming today, but at the same time, it's an absolute necessity for anyone Who's who's in the bodybuilding world? Um, I think with to, you know not just the, with all athletes. I think yeah. it, it, at whatever level you're at. I mean, you can mm. be an athlete and not win anything. You're still an athlete. You're still training. Yeah, true. You know, you want to perform at the optimum level you can. Mm. And with you know previous transgressions we've had in our lives and and things yeah. we've done and everyone's done things. Yeah. It's we don't really know what the long term effect is going to be. So mm. it's in my view it's better to know than not to know. If yeah. you know it can be nipped in the bud, it can yeah. be fixed and it can be improved upon. Yeah. Now even for example, um, you know, so, so we've, there's certain allergy tests or uh, uh, functionality tests we do, and people are taking certain supplements, but actually they have an allergy to them. Right. So it's become it becomes counterproductive Absolutely. to them. So uh, it's it's good to know, yeah. and I mean we're going to be doing a DNA test on you, say a blood test on you, on an arterial check, and even the, the DNA test will tell you if your body is um, has the ability to benefit from glutamine, for example. Wow! So if you were taking glutamine and you find that your body doesn't have, you've just saved yourself a, a certain amount of money, uh, it will tell you whether um, what sort of proteins are better for you than others. Yeah. It'll even tell you what sort of vegetables are better for you than others. Now, you know, this is 2021 now, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's an era of science, and it's just, with epigenetics and DNA, we're just, we're just sort of creeping into that thing now. Yeah. In 10 years' time, it'll literally, I believe, you'll be just going to a pharmacy and picking up a kit yeah. for a couple of pounds as yeah. technology gets better, and you'll know exactly where you are, and yeah. that, it has to be that way. Yeah. It has to be that way. Um, and using COVID as an example, we've seen countless studies, contradictory studies, contradictory evidence. You've got the pro lobby, the against lobby, you've got very senior academics and virologists and microbiologists who are disagreeing with others. Yeah. Ultimately, you have to be responsible for yourself. Eh? It's as simple as that, yeah. especially in bodybuilding. Yeah. It's so intensive and you know, we do know, unfortunately, there have been deaths and there have been lots of, lots of incidents with it. Any sport at that level, yeah. uh, there's always a risk to it. It's as simple as that. Yeah. What we'll be doing today is, um, a complete blood profile and a complete cardiac profile 
and a vitamin deficiency profile as well as a metabolite profile so we'll basically know exactly it's like a health we'll know exactly where you are the proteins the enzymes um, uh, the your lipid profile your kidneys liver hormones inflammation wow. um, all the, uh, and how they're interacting with you today yeah so for example just just a, a simple thing let's say if you're if the DHT is too high, mm -hmm. we know we know how to control that. Yeah. If your liver function is slightly off, we would not know how to do that. Mm -hmm. um, with the cardiac uh, profile, it's very important because you have gradual arterial uh, plaque buildup. Mm -hmm. Now, there's no symptoms of a heart heart disease as such. Mm -hmm. I mean, people can wake up in the morning, they're fine, yeah. they drop dead. Yeah. You may not get a pain, you may not get that. It's a silent killer. Yeah. Uh, what we're also doing is a is a blood pressure. Uh, it's known as an arterial um, wave analysis and it's a very clever bit of equipment and logarithms and it basically looks at, in very simple terms, how thick your arteries are. Yeah. Simple as that, and arterial stiffness. Yeah. The stiffer your arteries, it's not good for you. No. The, the more flexible they are, it's, it's better for you. Yeah. It's a very unique type of test. When we combine that all with also with the, D the DNA test, yep. we have an extremely accurate picture of where you are today mm -hmm. and where to improve from and, and how to go better. Now, what we're going to do with you is once we've done the arterial check, we'll put you on the bike, give you some coffee, so you've got a slightly uh, um, higher heart rate, yep. and then we redo it, and then we match the two reports together. See. We see where the discrepancy is. Yep. There shouldn't be any. No. But if, for example, we have that your age is 40 for example mm. but after that it's jumped to 60 then yeah. we know there's a problem there so we can nip it in the bud again I understand. Now it's yep. it's not very often it happens so don't start panicking now and, <laughs> and get, the, yeah. get the white coat syndrome i was actually sweating yeah, when you're yeah. talking about it. <laughs> and uh because sometimes people do have that white coat syndrome they 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 but the yeah. the the data will sort of correlate with that yeah. however if for example and we've had this many times where people have come in no problem at all we've had the result back we sent them off for a CT scan and mm -hmm. they've had to have a stent put in. Yeah. This is how good the science is today. It's unfortunate yeah. it's not available in the NHS to a certain degree no. and it's, un it's unfortunate there has to be a monetary value to it. But the science is there now yeah. and people should really exploit it. if it can it. save your life then it's priceless isn't it? Especially men. I mean yeah. men really we don't give a shit do we? It's no. like you know you're training, you're, you're hard, you're tough. Yeah. Yeah, especially when you're up north, yeah, yeah, yeah hard geezers. Especially when you're crossfitting in Birmingham. <laughs> yeah, crossfitting in Birmingham, <laughs> with my little card on, yeah. And uh, yeah. so, you know, it's, it's, um, well, I'm still a henchster, you've got to be you like, are still like, you're still, and you're really cardio fit now. Yeah, so. cardio fit is fine, yeah, <laughs> just in my t-shirt now. But, uh, you know, you just don't know really. And, yeah. you know, there's been a, the, the whole psychological stress of COVID as well, of work. Yeah. You know, the, the stress is progressive. Yeah. You may not even feel that you're under stress because you're, you're constantly, you need a physiological amount of stress to function anyway. Yeah. But when it rises, you don't know what the effect on your body is. Yeah. You're missing a meal here, you're not yeah. drinking enough water, you know, you're not sleeping well, you've been disturbed at night. All of, all of this has a physiological effect. Yeah. And that's what the DNA will, will, will tell us as, you know, and, and get a much more accurate picture as of the signs yeah. of today. Yeah. And of course, it, it'll improve as time goes on. Great. I look forward to it. Okay, that. so what we'll do, we'll take... Uh, Guys, could we have some blood samples of, of this young man here? Are you going to cry? I'm going to what? Cry? Are you going to cry with the needles? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'll be all right with the needles. You just have to hold your hand if you want. I can't breathe, Kirk. Don't make me laugh. Lobster. <laughs> A lobster. <laughs> Get in the way, Doc. Oops, sorry. You feeling all right? Yeah, I feel fine, yeah. Super. Thank you. Okay, so now... Great. 
just give you some water. The psychological effect of giving the blood can make people dizzy. All oh, right, okay. So fill her at the moment. Yeah, no, no, but you'd be fine. It's, it's, it's you get more in a nosebleed as such. Mm. So how often are you training? Um, I'm training every other day. I'm doing cardio every... I'm doing cardio five times a week as well. What's your sort of target weight at the end? Um, pro I'd probably say around about 17, two or three. But when we started the, art, the, the whole filming process off, it was a case of looking like a bodybuilder again. Yeah. Um, as I'm enjoying the strength training so much, um, I still need to bring my waist in. So if it wasn't for the filming, I'd probably be trying to just keep getting bigger. But um, I think it, we need to polish it and uh, make sure uh, I bring a nice looking physique. So I'm just gonna come down a little bit more. I'd say another stone and a half, Yeah, I reckon. It's easy done though, Yeah, it? it's not like it. I'm interested to see what I feel like at 17 too. I, I don't think I've been like under 18 and a half stone for um, for like eight years. I was around about 19 stone to 19, 10 fluctuating for about three or four years. So I was, I was, I was quite grossly overweight really for my height. Yeah. Um, it was because I was still eating like a bodybuilder, but not eating bodybuilding food all the time and then not training. <laughs> so mm. it just, you, you're so used to keep eating that without doing the exercise, um, you're just storing more and more fat. And I think um, you kind of become a bit deluded with the look in the mirror that you're seeing something that people aren't. Yeah, <laughs> you, kind the, of, you think you're still like a bodybuilder and you it's really, a, it's the waist bigger and the shoulders yeah, are smaller. Because you're constantly in the bulk, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's that, it's okay. that re reverse body dysmorphia. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're, you're always in a 24-hour yeah. bulk. Yeah. See, that's, that's with the powerlifting, it's easy, isn't it? Because you're always bulking. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's not a problem. Yeah. yeah. Mm. You look big on some of them pictures there. Sorry? You look big on some of them pictures there. What's your, what's your heaviest weight? 155. Wow. You know, but some people have a problem getting big. That's never been my problem. No. It's that getting lean is yeah, the issue. Yeah, yeah. I like to eat and, you know, I do like to have curries yeah. every day. Um, you know, things like this. You're doing a lot of cardio now though, aren't you? Sorry? Yeah. 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 What are you weighing again now? I'm 142 now. Oh, that's a fair bit. Not exactly gone. I, I was one, what was I? I was 124 uh, about four or five weeks ago yeah and that was way too heavy for me i felt awful yeah it's a lot of water retention it's just not a nice feeling i think that the thing with the uh, with i mean at 155 you know i, I still had that sort of fairly fit type of thing because yeah. i mean i'm six foot six so yeah. you've got that ability to carry it yeah um but it's when you when I've the lowest I've been is like 125. Yeah. Uh, in the last say 30 years. Yeah. Then I felt much. Now as I'm getting older, I'm thinking, you know, what, I should be maybe like 120. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to drop down to 90. Yeah. That's something something stupid like that. Yeah. Or uh, you know, no. you still want. I don't think you could. No, you still want some You're size. So quite, if you go yeah. by the BMI. You're like and, a, a, a meso yeah. endo. Yeah. If you go if you go like by the uh, the BMI index. Yeah. I should be like uh, 89 or something. Yeah. I have to cut both my legs off. It's just, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cheers, son. Thank you. How tall are you, Kirk? Uh, 183. 183. So I'm like 5'11 and a half. Right, now I want you to take your shoes and socks off, please, sir. Okay. Also. Cool. I know if you stand on this machine. So your weight is 113. Oh, that's good, I've lost, I've lost a lot. Okay. Yeah. Age? 
37 at the moment. 37 and yep. 183 height. Male? Yep. Yes. Yep. Hold this handle Hold and this the other one. one and look up a little bit. Hold with this one as well? Yeah, with your thumbs on the, on the gold. Okay. Okay, bring it up. And it's going to make some beeping noises and funny noises, but don't worry about it. Okay. So this machine is often used, as it says, no pacemaker. It's often used in kidney units mm -hmm. to assess how much water you have okay. in your body or pe and for people's kidney function. Also, in um, to see how much muscle, skeletal muscle you have, oh. or muscle wasted. We use it sort of as a peripheral use. Yep. Gives a very good indicator of of where you are as in proportions. Okay. And it's actually like a, a medical device, it's not a sort of... And how, how, how does this break down then? Is it a kind of... Um, how does it actually work to measure the water? Basically, it's, it sends signals through, yeah. so the density of muscle, it reports yeah. back. Right. It takes longer for the bounce back. Oh, I see. Okay, bone yeah. takes longer. So yeah. they even give us a, exactly down... When you see the report, it's, it's actually yeah. amazing. Wow. It'll give you a down to, down to the exact weight of yeah. your bones. Wow. It's crazy. So it's like your 29.99 machine up here. Right? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, good. And as soon as it prints, you can put that down. Yep. Yep, you can put that down there. Yep. Right, this is your body composition analysis. Okay. Now, I know at the top it's got the Royal Free Hospital Department of Nephrology, but mm -hmm. we didn't nick the machine just, for, just to be on, re <laughs> on, on record. Now, what this does is it's a very accurate way of um, looking at intracellular water, extracellular water, uh, protein, mineral, body fat, weight, skeletal muscle mass. Now, we don't really do BMIs. BMIs, as you know, are, are fairly ac you know, inaccurate for our purposes. Yeah. They do have a purpose, but not, not for our purpose. So if we go through this now, that you've got a total of 68.1 kg water in your body. So your, full, your total body weight is, um, where is it gone? 113 kg. Mm -hmm. Out of that, 68.1 kg is water. Okay. As in meat protein um, if you were dehydrated as such and put in a microwave you have 18.5 kg of protein okay so if you're on a desert island out of the four of us i'd be eating you <laughs> okay <laughs> not me of course but we'd be eating you and mineral mass this is this is your bone mass okay. so you have 6.31 kg of bone mass the average is between 3.83 to 4.69 but because you train, and anybody who trains, they have a higher bone density, so you know obviously yeah. to, to, to become load bearing. Yeah. So this is so that's very good, mm -hmm. and you have twenty point nine kg exactly of fat. Mm -hmm. This is extremely accurate. Yeah. So uh, so you've got twenty point nine kg of fat. Now, as we as we look across, you've got fifty three point eight. Uh, your your score for the skeletal muscle mass is fifty three point eight kg in total. Now that would also obviously also include water and your body mass index is coming up at 34 which we're going to ignore. Mm -hmm. Your right arm is slightly smaller than your left arm and your left leg is bigger than your right leg. Wow. Okay, on, on, yeah. on, the, on the, the top that's, of the, 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 the size. Crazy. Yeah. Okay, now what we've got here, you've got a score of 106 Anything above 100 is good. Now, for example, the best we've seen is like 144, who's yep. top, complete, world-class athlete. Yep. Uh, but anything above 100 is good. Now, what would happen is that when you lower the fat by 2, 3 kg and you increase the muscle by a kg, this score would go higher. Yep. Okay, so this is a very good overall health score. Okay. Now, because you've got mass on you, you're, now, one of the things it tells us is your upper body is more developed than your lower body. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you look at the body balance and the, the center of gravity, you're top heavy. Yeah. Okay, not yep. less. So that, that's something which can do it. So these things are used basically to, to look at water and muscle mass. So it can, it's, it's a very good add-on 
for performance yep. because it gives us a good indicator. So next time, we tell you did it a month from now yep. and your skeletal muscle mass, let's say it increased by, by three points, but your fat increased by two, you get a different score. So you actually know how you're progressing, yeah. whether, it's, whether it's fat. Now remember with, with, um, with muscle and glycogen, a lot of it is water. Yeah. So even, even if you're dehydrated, um, you know, th this will give us the sort of data we need. Just like another a bit of information, you know, to make somebody perform better. Yep. So these are sort of very good tests. Now, okay. what I want you to do now is the, the DNA test. Yep. Okay. It's a little bit sort of a, it's not the most graceful of things to do, okay. but if you open the top to that, yep. fit that nozzle into it, please. Okay. And now spit <laughs> into the thing. Now I'm going to put because it's not the most graceful of things. So here's some tissue for you there as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's come through or not. And just sort of a bit with the DNA and epigenetics. It's you know we're all born with a set, set type of DNA. And we're always led to believe that our, we can't change our DNA. Now, with epigen well, we can't change the DNA, we can change the factors for it. Now, obviously, like, you know, to this RNA vaccine, they will modify the DNA. The DNA. But what we find out is what type of body you are, yeah. what foods will suit you, what type of training, what type of recovery, whether, what, whether you're more high risk of having heart disease, whether you're high risk of back pain, whether you're, uh, your tendon strength. So you can actually implement changes now to stop those things happening. So you may have yeah. the genes for it, but the genes may never express themselves. I can understand, yeah. Okay, so yeah. it's, it's, you know, I mean, this is, like I said earlier, it's gonna be an amazing, you know, very interesting part yeah. for science now, the human body. Yeah. I think that's all gone through him, Ron. You can see it just about, still okay. bits coming out. Let's have a look. Could you have a bit more, please? Yeah. Well, I said, it's not the most graceful way of doing it. Don't be shy. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, see that there. Hope you clean the teeth, Kirk. Your results might come back half cluttered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've actually somehow get bits of food in there. You think, oh, come on, guys. Oh, yeah, that one hit there. Yeah, another. Why did you want up to four mil? Yeah. Up to there. Oh, yeah, what is that now? <laughs> Let me give some water, swill your mouth out. Yeah. Just let me try and get some more slime. Just spit it into the sink. Okay, cheers, Paul. So give me that. Just yeah. swill your mouth out in the sink, yeah. and then I let people spit on me when they're doing anything for. <laughs> I'm trying to get it up to four mil. No, that's right. I'm running. Yeah, that's that'll be fine. Yeah. Now, if you give us that cap, yeah, and it's just a Okay, so now we have we have this now as well. Yep. We've got the bloods. We've done the impedance for them. Now, what we're going to do is the arterial check for your heart. Okay. So we were one eighty three height. Yep. We were 113 weight. Yeah. Turn off then. Yeah, you don't need it anymore. Uh. And we go. Okay, so just relax like normal now. Yeah. Oh, panicking. Uh, it's like, I'm just going to explore that. Yeah, <laughs> it's got a little... But it actually listens to your heartbeat as well. Wow. So I think, is this quite new technology? In Germany it's not. No. It's just in Britain, unfortunately. Yeah. It's, uh, it is, but... It, it is fairly new. I mean, everything's logarithm based now. It's, a fun, it's really a fantastic piece of kit. And yeah. All credit to, to Newmed who, who yeah. designed it. It's a fantastic kit. I mean, I, 
I came across it in Germany about six years ago, yeah. and uh, the Frankfurt football team are using it. Well, I suppose well, there's, there's been quite, quite a few cardiac problems, hasn't there, with football? So yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, ultimately, I mean, you know, people say that we're designed to live. I have the opposite view. You know, we're actually designed to die. Yeah. But you can, you can try to find out as much as you can about your body and, and try to prevent it. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> it's quite scary to a point. Yeah. But um, it is. it's better to know than not to know, especially when you were talking about stents before and stuff. And be able to I mean, look, when, your when you, your kids. you've got to remember is when you have like places like ours, mm. And sometimes where the, when you have nowhere else to go, people mm. come to us, yeah. other than the, the athletes. And obviously with our entire team, it's not just me, it's the whole team. So we're used to seeing people who are ill. It's, mm. it's a norm. Yeah. And if you, if you go to see a cardiologist, all he sees is people who've got heart problems. You see yeah. a cancer, all he does with cancer. So it's, it's a norm. Yeah. But there's some horrible tragedies where, we've, where people are normal and we've had results back and they've got liver problems, mm. they've got... Um, uh, high high prolactin issues, and that prolactin turned out to be a cyst or a tumor on the pituitary gland. Mm. I mean, I've come across twenty or thirty of these. Really? And in my career, I must have known fifty to hundred people have died. Wow! So it was just nothing could be done, and it, it is. But generally speaking, we, you know, we do live long ages as well, mm. and we yeah, have true. to, you know, we have to look after ourselves, and uh, you know, we have to take even when we're stuck. We refer to professionals who know more than us and specialists, and, yeah, and yeah. you know you have to you have to look after your health. Yeah, absolutely. The average heart rate is seventy four at the moment. This will take you know a few minutes, and we mm. need a bit of silence now because it's got a mic in there and it picks it up. So That's why I get nervous. Yeah, yeah, don't get nervous. <laughs> don't, 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 when you stop talking, I get nervous. All right, we'll just we'll just talk about motorbike sense. Yeah. <laughs> stamp collection. I've got a stamp collection I can show you to calm Love you it. down if you want. Yeah. Good. Show you my penny black. <laughs> <laughs> what we used to have is on the big screens mm. and you could see all the waves and the funk oh, yeah. thing. Yeah. Then we realised people were getting nervous. Yeah. What's that? What's this? What's when that it theme? stops. Yeah, what's that sound? Why is it? <laughs> when it goes, noob. <laughs> yeah, so then I've had to turn these screens off now. <laughs> and I, I thought I'd put it out of the screen, just fell down, but. People would get, because we thought it looks cool, like yeah, it's an yeah, yeah. Ivan Drago training thing. Yeah, yeah. But people were getting nervous, and then I just turned it off. Yeah. So those, those screens there, yeah, they all link up to your heart and things. Well. But pe what's, what is that? Why yeah. is it fluttered? But heart rate's going up and up and up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do think it's important to do this. Mm. It's, uh, especially having a, a young daughter now, it's, um, <coughs> it, it's good to know. It's good to know, especially if it can be prevented. Yeah. You know, even if nothing's imminent. I think it's just a matter of time. Yeah, yeah. I really do. Uh, health insurance companies now yeah. will start doing all of these things before they give you insurance. Yeah. I think it's just a matter of time. Yeah. I'm not saying it's, I don't think it's a good trend, but I think it certainly mm. will go that way. Okay, so that's done now. Great. Now. <gasps> duh, 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 duh. <laughs> okay, would you like to know how. What is your arterial age? Yeah. You sure? No. <laughs> it's gonna cost him, mate. Right. Forty-two. Okay. Okay. Now, let's not let let's break it down now. Okay. Yeah. So your small arteries are fine. But it's just you just creeped up a little bit there. Bear in mind we're just eating as well. Yeah. But to bear in mind you've just eaten and that you've travelled and all the other factors which come into it. Uh -huh. Now, all your readings were fine. One reading where you must have got slightly nervous, your um, your blood pressure went up slightly in that within that yeah. 15 minutes. Yeah. Okay, so you probably just panicked or something. Yeah. Okay. You know. 133, 72, 129, yeah. 72, 131, 78. All right, it's just come down, hasn't it? Yeah, so it's just a marginal yeah, sort of thing yeah. within a few minutes of each other. <coughs> now, so there's nothing particularly here to worry about. You know, I wouldn't be really worried about anything particularly okay. here. There. Now what we're going to do, we're going to give you some coffee and then put you on the bike so your heart's a little bit under stress yeah. and uh, the, the, you've had some coffee as well. And um, 
We will then redo this again and we'll compare the two. Okay. Now, if we have a jump to like 65 or something or 59 or something like this, then we we'll say, unfortunately, there is a problem. Yeah. Okay, couple that with a cardiac blood test we've done, we get a very, very good picture yeah. of, uh, of, of what we could do. And what we could also even do is put the electrodes on you and then run your foot, foot if it need be, for a full stress test as well. Okay. We could do that as well. Okay, so okay. what we'll do, yep. we'll take this off you now. And we'll give you some coffee. Yep. Right, so what we're going to do now is you're going to go on the bike or the treadmill, whatever, 10, 15 minutes, and uh, you get your heart rate increased. Now, what exercise does it? Immediately lowers blood pressure anyway. We've also given you like a very strong coffee. And now we're going to compare the reading we did originally mm -hmm. with this. Now, we should, we'll get, we'll obviously, we'll get a small fluctuation. Yeah. Now, if we had like a big fluctuation, then we know there's a problem. Mm -hmm. And then at that stage, we'll, we'll put the electrodes on you and then we'll do a full stress test. Okay. I mean, it should be fine, it's just precautionary, really. Mm -hmm. But what this will do, the two readings, like an ECG will give you a reading then and there, instant, that particular minute. Yeah. You could leave the hospital and drop dead, because yeah. it's just for that minute. Yeah. This is now over a course of a period of time. It's yeah. a very accurate way to assess the health yeah. of your heart and your arteries. Okay. So okay, how are. long do you want me to do, Amra? About 15 minutes. 15 minutes? This good pace. Okay. Fucking <laughs> oh. So some people, they, they don't like to do the bikes, so we put them on a the treadmill, others will use the rowing machine for them. Yeah. The same thing, just to put a bit of stress onto the heart. At least I can get a bit of an extra cardio session in. Yeah. And to be fair, I've come down from 124 to 113 there, so it's 11, yeah. 11 kilos. So a, lot of, a lot of water retention. You're going to start CrossFit soon. <laughs> <laughs> Fifteen minutes and ten seconds. Okay, Yo. time to get off. Whew. Now I have to ask you, do you feel dizzy or anything? <laughs> no, I'm alright. I'm alright. Right. Whew. So grab grab a seat. So it'll be the same procedure again. Yep. Now this time we'll have a lot more fluctuations, so don't worry about them. Yeah. Because your heart rate will start going down and we get you know, technically, it's an erratic result, which is what we want. Yep. I think your arms grown since. Yeah. I was pushing them pedals with my arms. Because <laughs> my legs are not right, what you yeah, said. Yeah, okay. Yeah. What were you saying before about my legs? Is it my left my right legs bigger than my left, yeah. but my left yeah. arm's bigger than my right? Yeah. Like, for example, a lot of back pain is not through the back, it's through the tight hamstrings. Yeah. Okay, so now we can... There's a company which has just been given 24 million funding, which are making a small sleeve to fit onto your, uh, onto, onto your artery here. And you, you'll be basically monitoring 24 hours a day through really? an hour. Yeah, it, it, it'd be fantastic. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, it'd be really I suppose good. then you get a proper consistent reading then over time. Don't I think, you? again, five, five years from now with these smartphones, yeah. it's, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. It really is. I mean, yeah. imagine if you're an hour away from a heart attack and it beeps and yep. it tells you tells to get you. to the hospital. Right, the A&E &A may send you home, but imagine yeah, if you've got... Be like, overflowed, <laughs> wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Especially if they dodge your software. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So your heart rate's, uh, last time round, it was 77, so your heart rate's 98 at the moment. Okay, that's not bad. Okay, it's not bad. No. And your blood pressure, 135 over 77, so it's just, just slightly risen. Mm -hmm. Okay, not slightly. Now, what we'll see the second reading, it should go down. Mm -hmm. well, it should then go down. Yeah. Because where we at last time, was it 131 and then 128? Yeah. 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 So 120 over 80 is, it, is yeah, normal. It's, it's perfect. It's perfectly yeah. right, yeah. yeah that's the optimum. So it, it can be, yeah. you know, 135, 75, that sort of figure. Okay. And with bodybuilders who come in then, what is it do you, do you tend to find, uh, especially some of the, the bigger level bodybuilders, 
Where's their systolic diastolic? I think this this is the thing. It varies because with depending on what they're using, pre workout certainly don't help. Yeah. Um, the blood being slightly thicker than normal, um, dehydration. Um, there's lots of factors of, of other supplements they're using. Yeah. So it varies. What we have to try to pull out is an average mm. and then take into account what they're doing with the blood test to yeah. work out a better figure. It's slightly more difficult. So a stress test for them is more accurate, yeah. which, which uh, and, and also then we'll do echoes as well, yeah. just, just to make sure. Yeah. Because anybody who's like with cyclists, rowers, they also have enlarged left ventricle. Yeah. And the same thing with, with a lot of big guys who are lifting heavy. Yeah. So that, that gives you a slightly different reading to, yeah. to normal. So it's normal within bodybuilding, but it's a, it's a niche. It's like a, a sub-niche of a niche. So th there's different categories and different scores for those guys. Um, now, obviously, it's not good for anyone to be at that competition level condition all year round. It's impossible no. to maintain. And the bigger you are, the more stress is placed on your heart. So if you remember in the old days, the off season, people would go up to 300 Absolutely. pounds. That no one really does that anymore. No, no there's no real need for. There's a lot of water retention. Yeah, there's a lot of water retention, a lot of overeating. Yeah. So, you know, we don't really see that much that much anymore. Um, what I would say, which is a very important note, pro bodybuilders are the top top level amateurs. They're a lot healthier than your average gym guy. Yeah. It's a very important point here, mm. because the pro level guys actually know what they're doing. Um, or they should know what they're doing and they have a support network yeah. whereas the youngsters and the everybody's going to an online coach and everybody's it's you can't simply train without a coach anymore those coaches necessarily don't know what they're doing no and they uh, pick a look up from online as well yeah and some of these forums are way off yeah they're completely you know? way off i mean yeah. there's, there's too much information on the yeah. knowledge is good but there's way too much information on the internet yeah. and a lot of it is rubbish and everyone's got a vested interest into it yeah. they're trying to sell their product they're trying to do this they're trying to do this and it doesn't necessarily always work a oh, question for you so you mentioned about the left ventricle being yeah. um over oversized i take it once it's oversized it's oversized no it, 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 can, it slowly it you see, this is where the use of anabolic steroids, there's a, a anabolic enlargement and there's a natural enlargement as yeah. such. They do, when you stop training at that intensity, it does drop. Right. It, it does get smaller. Yeah. It just depends how big it's got. Mm -hmm. And then what are the damages done to the heart? So, so with, with steroids um, in general, uh, taking them for bodybuilding purposes, what are the main heart concerns then? Is it scarring of the heart? Or? I think the... The first thing is blood pressure. Yeah. Blood pressure, for me, the heart is less of a worry than the kidneys. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's less of a worry. If you're, uh, of course the heart's a concern, um, but we're seeing more and more kidney damage than we are really heart damage. Yeah. Now, it's the things like diuretics, it's the stimulants, the T3s, the cleanse, yeah. uh, that's, what, that's what's to worry about for the heart. Yeah. Now, so imagine if, you're, if your blood is already thick, your blood pressure is already high. You're also now taking other stimulants. You're taking particular type of enhancements which also thicken the blood further. Mm -hmm. it's, a rest, it's a cocktail of disaster, oh, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, there are alternatives out there. And like we've always said, you know, for years, is less is more. Yeah. You cannot beat every champion has fantastic genet uh, genetic ability. This is why we all can't run 100 meters like a snail bolt uh, and we can't, you know, we're not Ed Moses, all these great runners in the past and great boxers. They are, they are who they are because of, of what they are. You know, so what, what people have to accept, we have a genetic ability, train to that and yeah. train to your strengths. Yeah. You know, you're not, you know, Pujanowski, one yeah. of the great strong men ever. You know, I've lifted heavy. I'm never going to be Pujanovsky. It doesn't matter what I took, I would never yeah. do it. Accept it and, yeah. and live your life. Yeah. And keep the sport as the fun and the joy it should have been. Mm. You know, Gosh. because let's be brutally honest, there's nothing healthy about extreme bodybuilding. There's nothing healthy no. about it. Let's be totally no. honest. No, it's not. And, you know, one of the things now... Um, which we, get, which we are getting concerned about is there's a lot of products on the market which are claiming to do this, 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 this. Yeah. They actually are not. Mm. And secondly, they're actually damaging people more long term. Mm. 
and this is this is a real serious concern and at some stage some action will be taken on this mm. so you know you need to lower your doses not take more of a particular sub Absolutely. supplement it doesn't work no. the scarring is still happening like on the physiological level it's still happening yeah the results are just being masked yep. and this is a real real serious concern so people have got this fallacy that we're safe whereas in fact they're not no and you know we've seen many times blood tests done but when we then have a a ultrasound or an MRI done mm. of the organs it's, it's a totally different, different story, story yeah 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 I suppose that's the worry with a lot of the uh, the youngsters as well when they're, when they're guided from forums yeah. they just think oh, I'll put a bit more in and a bit more and a bit more because Absolutely, my yeah. favorite star says he's doing that okay so and, uh, what we've got now we've got a result now at 43 okay okay which is which even though it's a, it's a sad face this is this is something for us this this is good so yeah. under stress with coffee it hasn't had a marginal change so that we wouldn't be worried about your heart okay okay so that, that's that's very good now we will reaffirm this as such so there's no need now to do a stress test we're not worried about that yeah um your heart rate has also dropped down as well now mm -hmm. and so it's all good now when we get the cardiac markers back we compare the two together mm -hmm. with the other blood results and if they're needed because you know we're all about being extra cautious and extra safe yeah. so if needed then we can then run some other tests put you under 20 minutes of of intensity and then 30 minutes at a walking pace back up to intensity again yeah. so we're really putting pressure on the heart and then redo another analysis yeah. and then if need be we could do that mm -hmm. but at the moment I don't, I don't think we do that's good okay so that's great, all yeah, good that's, that's all great. good that's very good and if we just look at the average of readings um, yeah so if you look at the, the heart rate it's been progressively been going down yeah so that, 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 that you know that's fine great. there's nothing to worry about there mm -hmm. It's all good. It's all great, mate. Great. Happy days. Fantastic. Super. So you're not going to die on your way home. <laughs> so not. Chris is driving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, well, in, in that case, that's a different story. <laughs> now, what I would just want to do is just one last thing. Yeah. It's, it's just in case we have a... You know, I bought this super extra sleeve. We've never had to use it. So I'm waiting for that 28 inch bicep to turn up. <laughs> it's this pause, which is what it was. It's a suspense, yeah, why, isn't it? Why is it taking and so long? And everyone will be quiet when it's yeah. happening. <laughs> 134 over 70. That's, no, that's not that, too that's bad. That's dead odd. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's fine. Yeah, the heart rate's you know, dropped as well. So yeah, it's, that's cool. It's nothing to worry about. No. Nope. Great. Sound of the pound. Super. Did you want to tell everyone a little bit about where, where they can find you? And um, We're based in Birmingham, London. Just over here. Yep. We're based in uh, Birmingham, uh, London. We're also opening in Newcastle in a few weeks' time. And we're in Bradford. Uh, we're also in Germany and we have a sub-clinic in Dubai. So we basically work with performance with athletes and non-athletes, health and wellness. We've got a team, uh, an entire team of doctors, um, endocrinologists, urologists, cardiologists, like the best in the business. And um, you know, our objective is for all athletes, regardless of sport and what they do, um, is to keep them as safe as we possibly can and for your normal non-athlete public just on the health wellness and functional health you know the whole team of us and uh, this is what we try to do imran's got a lot of kit here uh, that's quite specialist and a lot of other practices similar to this doesn't actually have this level of technology um we were also speaking before uh, off camera just about this prices are very very well priced as well so uh, compared to the london prices on harley street where i've i've been myself a few times it's uh, it's very reasonable so if you are looking to uh, see where your health's at, uh, get all the checks that I've done today, or maybe just a couple of them, uh, please contact him around at Transfer. Yeah, we also do like and, uh, DNA tests, we do gut analysis, analysis micro microbiome analysis, a uh, whole host of specialist things which you know aren't really done in the UK, so we have to send them abroad, you know, things like cancer markers, all sorts of things we do. And it's, you know, the objective is to provide a service to improve anyone's health and make them better than they are. Yeah, super. Listen, I've really enjoyed today, mate. It's, it's been, been quite airy. I've been <laughs> nervous at times. <laughs> it's been good to see you. <laughs> yeah, it's good seeing it's good you too to again. You guys as well. But yeah, awesome. So, so what we, now, what we do because we've got base readings now. Yep. 
next time whenever you're in Birmingham, you're travelling by or whatever, or at one of these expos, we come, we'll have the kit with us. Of course. We can redo it, we, we can do. compare it. I think so. So once you build up um, a, a picture, a chronological order of here, you can actually see how your health is going. Yeah. Now, once we get the results of the DNA, the DNA test, that will give you a lot of, like a 170 page report wow. uh, of that. And we can even go now to the epigenetic side to get a genetic age for you to yeah. see what age your body's at. Wow. I mean, it's, it's amazing, it's crazy, isn't it? Isn't I mean, it? It really is. Yeah, it's crazy. When you combine all of this, it's, this couldn't have been done 10 years ago. No. No. You know, it couldn't have been done. You know, we, before you had these sports labs and it would be like a 10 million pound lab and, you know, Ivan Drago type of yeah, situation. Yeah, yeah. Now one table does it. Yeah. Crazy. It's fucking amazing. I no, mean, I, it really I, I is. Think it's, I think it's imperative, actually, especially when you get older, because you just don't know. And the, the worst thing is, is leaving it, and then you're dropping dead. And yeah. if you could just have known about it, so yeah, many things I mean, now it, you can do to... It's, uh, you know, sometimes people will tell you, look, I've had symptoms for six months, I didn't do anything. Yeah. And you always think, you know, I wish they had done. Yeah. You know, I wish they had done Absolutely. it. And um, not blaming the NHS, but also blaming the NHS. They are so strained. Mm. It's male health it has never been a priority in Britain. No. It never had at all. No. Um, it's less so now. Mm. The budgets just aren't there. Yeah. So we see this with the hormone treatment, etc. The budget just isn't there to well, handle them. I, I, I went to um, a doctor about the hormone treatment and it was called New... New... But what's it called? It's Newman. like a four-month testosterone injection. Nibido. Nibido. Nibido, yeah. Nibido. Um, and... Whenever it reports about that, the first few months are great, first few but weeks, then yeah, it kind yeah. of tails off. It's a cheap, it, it, it's, it's, a cheap, cheap. it's a cheap, it, it, it's, it's yeah. very cheap, yeah. um, and it's very, it doesn't take much time. No. It's one injection every four months or three months, mm. uh, it's a four mil injection. That's right, and which is pretty heavy, yeah. especially for abscesses or anything like that. It's a lot of crap, I yeah. mean, it, it's just it's cheap and cheerful. Yeah. Now, nanthate is more expensive, sustenon mm. is, is fairly cheap, mm. but there's all the conditions with it. If, you're, if you get a high hematuric count, you can't, you can't donate your blood. Yeah. So it's all a cost for the NHS. I see. Also, let's be brutally honest, there's so much abuse of it. Mm. <laughs> you know, let's be totally honest, there's so much abuse, there's so much underground abuse. The endocrinologist, should he worry about a child who's not getting his height and spending money, the government's mm. money on that, or should they be worrying about somebody who's been abusing steroids? Yeah. You know, they all have fixed yeah. ideas in their head, yeah. and they, they, the pool is an infinite. Yeah. So, unfortunately, a lot of people are, are falling on the wayside, and they, and they will do. Yeah. Um, you know, then the ethical argument can, can go, and look, if somebody plays football and breaks his leg, you know, should he get treatment? I mean, the, the argument just continues, yeah. but the reality is the, the NHS isn't no. and cannot do what it no. should be doing. No, I get, and give it I maybe five that. years, it'll end up being like an emergency well, type of service, ambulance yeah. and heart attacks and fractures. Yeah. Everything else you'll have to pay for, yeah. unfortunately. Well, I, uh, back many years ago when I was on TRT, uh, back before we started doing the IVF road, I was prescribed sustenance on them. Yeah. Uh, but now, I don't think it, like I said, financially for the NHS, uh, one shot will be a lot cheaper than giving me a packet of four out of three uh, yeah. vials that I used to pick yeah. up. And plus, then, plus now they won't, you, they, they won't give you them for you to then do and administer no. yourself. They then have that was years ago. Now they, they want a nurse to administer, which is more money and time. More so. money, a blood test every three months. Yeah. More money, a yeah. prostatic MRI. More money, mm. ECGs each time, yeah. a heart scan each time. Yeah. You see, this is all, all Absolutely. money. So what's what's happened? You've got this burgeoning underground market. Yeah. Um, and uh, like a black market, if you like, yeah. that doesn't help the situation because we're getting more and more people ill, yeah. higher doses. Yeah. Um, and then when you do go to hospital and you say, "Look, I did, I did take steroids, I did take TRT," immediately they don't want to know. No. And they don't have the knowledge base to deal with it either. No, and plus the fact that a lot of these underground labs aren't putting the right stuff in anyway. So that, well, no, when someone know. does have yeah. something yeah. and then has something else that's good or the proper dosages, they could be way they could be taking maybe, I don't know, three mil of something what has got nothing in it, then they go and take a different thing with three mil and they get yeah. themselves really in trouble, yeah, you yeah. know. So yeah. I mean, you, you see it all the time. Yeah, I mean, yeah. uh, I've got a whole case which we take to seminars and of different bottles and the analysis for them. And you can see how they vary yeah. completely. They vary yeah. completely. 
Yeah, but no, we'll wrap that up. Um, it's been it's been a pleasure seeing you. We'll definitely uh, look forward to the phone consultation about how uh, yeah. well, I mean, results I'm, come I'm, out. I'm coming your way, so Great. if I'm around that time, I'll yeah, come and meet you with those chat there. Sounds good. Awesome, pal. Thanks again.